Ladies and gents, welcome to Juju Reaction, and this is how large can a bacteria get? Life in size three by the channel Kuz Guzad in a nutshell. In and out, in and out, staying alive is about doing things. This very second, your cells are combusting glucose molecules with oxygen to make energy available, which keeps you alive for another precious moment. To get the oxygen to your cells, you are breathing. Breathing is an answer to very hard problem. How do you get the resources that your cells need to survive from the outside to the inside of your cells? Every living thing has to solve this problem, and the solution is surprisingly different depending on one of the most important regulators of life, size. Yeah, this is the third video of life and size. We are already reacted to the first two. Yeah, so basically, first, I've never thought of that. Uh, you know, I was gonna say that maybe because you know the way bacteria is made uh, it's bacteria is very small so you know clearly it doesn't have much mass and volume if bacteria gets bigger obviously the volume of the bacteria would get immensely higher because it's like 10 times more than the you know outside surface so if bacteria gets double the insides would get even more bigger so it has to you know accommodate that so th because of that there will be a cap to it and since smaller things the gravity is not much a factor for smaller things while bigger things a different case while smaller things uh, has to look out for things like i don't know surface tension and things like that so i don't know the biology of the bacteria has to change a lot and if uh, you know biology of the bacteria has to change that much whatever you're left with is that a bacteria anymore i don't know but yeah also the you know getting oxygen to your cells so yeah uh, in bacteria, the system must, must be pretty simple. While in us, it's pretty different thing, right? Uh, all the you know blood vessels basically it's, uh, you know taking oxygen from your lungs and you know red blood cells basically taking it to the, all the different part of the body. So it's a pretty complex system. Well, that's not the case with smaller things like bacteria. So yeah. Remember people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out the reaction and there's a link in the description. Uh, check out the cast world playlist like Cuz Gazan and Nutshell. I've reacted to quite a few videos from this channel already, so if you haven't seen them or missed any, check out that playlist. Uh, check out the playlist to like all this actually production, history, uh, internet historian, CGB Grey. Yeah, let's always on. In and out. In and out. Staying alive is about doing things. This very second, your cells are combusting glucose molecules with oxygen to make energy available, which keeps you alive for another precious moment. To get the oxygen to your cells, you're breathing. Breathing is an answer to a very hard problem. How do you get the resources that your cells need to survive from the outside to the inside of your cells? Every living thing has to solve this problem and the solution is surprisingly different depending on one of the most important regulators of life, size. As we've discussed in other videos, at different scales, the physical laws of the universe have different consequences for its inhabitants. Simple things like temperature, microgravity or surface tension might not matter to you or be a deadly danger depending on how big you are. Living things need a lot of different materials to keep themselves going, and they somehow need to transport them from the outside to the inside. This was a huge problem for the first things on the verge of being alive, because doing anything in our universe requires energy. And the first living beings on Earth did not have the abundance of tools and techniques available that life has today after billions of years of evolution. So, at the very beginning, life needed to find a way to get good stuff inside and bad stuff outside of itself without using energy. Yeah, about the energy. Every uh, living thing on the planet has to consume some kind of other living thing, right? I mean, apart from salt, everything we eat was once alive. So if there is an al you know, alien c comes on who I guess lives on photosynthesis, gets uh, you know, energy directly from the sun, who we'll see that and see like, God damn, these people are barbarians or something like that because that's just effed up to an alien who doesn't consume living things and just see that as really effed up thing. But we have to do that to survive because everybody eats something that was once alive apart from salt. So, you know, imagine if we were all like, you know, there were solar panels on our skin. So, you know, basically, you know, just like trees, we, we do, you know, a photosynthesis. How different life would have been, right? Luckily, the very first forms of life were very, very small. And because they were so small, 
they were able to use a free form of transport that was based on a physical law called diffusion. Diffusion is the rule of the universe that molecules, especially in liquids or gases, are constantly moving around in all directions. And because they move around and bump into each other and other molecules, they tend to spread. For example, if you drop a sugar cube into water, then there is a lot of sugar in one place, and in another place, there's none. As sugar molecules dissolve in the water, they will start randomly bumping against the water molecules and other sugar molecules. Slowly, all the sugar molecules will spread out and form multiple phases of different concentrations. These random movements continue endlessly, until at some point, the sugar will be spread evenly in the water. The great thing about diffusion is that life can use it for free. It yeah. doesn't require energy. And life loves free things. So all life on Earth relies on diffusion. Let's look at the smallest living being on Earth, a bacterium. Specifically, its surfaces. Cell membranes allow for diffusion of certain molecules. This specific bacterium consumes oxygen to live, while carbon dioxide is produced inside as a waste product. So inside the bacterium, there isn't a lot of oxygen. Yeah, so basically diffusion, you know, it's, uh, I don't know how diffusion exactly work, but I'm going to guess here, it's because of, you know, all the uh, different type of density of uh, matter and, you know, basically pressure itself to you know achieve some kind of equilibrium inside so basically laws of physics basically you know uh, causes diffusion to you know uh, work in that way i guess i don't know else to say that so one way i can think uh, you know something like that how something like that can benefit us uh, laws of physics working for us with no cost i guess there's something like you know uh, elevator i don't know what the name of that but there's something gravity elevator or something like that where people have you know proposed that you can dig holes uh, throughout the earth from one side to another and create this kind of elevator where you know gravity will basically you know pull you in and you know send you in the other side at basically no cost of energy because it's gravity pulling you and you can literally you know uh, travel from one side of her to other other side in just 90 minutes because that's how long it time it takes so this is just like you know how diffusion uh, works with no extra cost gravity could work like that for us for traveling I don't know I just remember that but a lot of carbon dioxide because of diffusion, these molecules will eventually spread evenly, so the carbon dioxide diffuses out, while oxygen is constantly replenished from the outside. But this kind of breathing only works for the very small world, for bacteria, amoeba or your cells, and a few very small animals. Insects, for example, have a fine network of trachea, tunnels with a pressure gradient where air very slowly can diffuse in and exchange gases with the insect cells. But even insects seem to be able to contract their trachea, and at least some even have specialized breathing organs like spiracles and air sacs. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, we breathe air and the oxygen, I guess, diffuses into our blood and then blood takes it all over the body, right? I'm pretty sure that's the case. The diffusion work for, in, for our cases too. At certain scales, diffusion is just too slow to keep cells alive. The fundamental problem is that the exchange with the environment can only happen at the surface and diffusion of materials can only sustain a certain amount of inside. Tiny living things have only a little bit of inside or volume and a lot of outside or surface area. But what if we wanted to create a bacteria the size of a blue whale and had a very convenient enlargement machine? We would sadly be messed up by the square cube law. In a nutshell, it means that if you make something 10 times larger, its outside or surface would grow by 100, but its insides or volume grows by 1,000 times. If we compare the bacterium Pseudomonas aeruginosa with a blue whale, we see that the bacterium has 10 million times more surface in relation to its volume than the whale. Yeah. The bacterium has a lot of outsides, while the whale has a lot of insides. 
if we make a bacterium the size of a whale, our giant bacteria now has too much inside, and most of its inside is now very far from its surface. The oxygen our bacterium needs would never reach the inside before it would run out of oxygen. Our giant bacterium would just die. Still, being bigger has many upsides. From making it harder to be eaten, to making it easier to eat others. But the size of cells is limited by the distance oxygen and nutrients can effectively diffuse to provide the inside with enough resources. So, life avoided this problem by forming multicellular structures. Beings composed of many cells instead of one. Because diffusion works better if you have many small units instead of one much bigger one. Over time, the cell buddies began to share work and specialize. Some cells concentrated on sensing the environment, others on digestion, others on movement. But that still wasn't enough. The problem of diffusion and surface and energy production remained, limiting the size these first multicellular forms of life could attain. So, in order to become even bigger, life solved the diffusion problem by having holes and caves and tunnels and by folding in on itself. Damn. So diffusion could happen easily in each one of the cells. Take yourself. What you consider your outside, your skin, has a surface area of about two square meters. But your lungs have a surface area of about 70 square meters. They aren't like uh. balloons, they're more like sponges filled with many tightly packed tiny balloons surrounded by blood vessels. When you breathe in, all these tiny balloons fill up with fresh air. Blood filled up with CO2 is pumped around the balloons. And then the magic of diffusion happens. The oxygen diffuses into the blood where it's picked up by red blood cells. And the CO2 diffuses out of the blood and into your lungs where it can be breathed out again. Uh, your blood then damn that's how it works <clears throat> i knew uh, you know red blood cells basically takes oxygen like that but i didn't know that this is how the function worked i've never seen an animation or any type like this in any other video this is the first time i'm seeing this so basically you know all those vessels you know surround the lung basically in that sense and the oxygen you know basically diffuses and red blood cells just take it to another you know all the cells carries oxygen-rich blood into the furthest corners of your body and picks up the CO2 waste. Diffusion in the body is effective at about one millimeter, so every cell in your body is at most one millimeter away from a blood vessel. So medium-sized animals like you need a lot of blood vessels to reach every cell in the body. Your body has around 100,000 kilometers of capillaries alone, the tiniest Damn. of your blood vessels, with a surface area of around 1,000 square meters. This is true for all parts of you that want to exchange something with the outside world. Your body needs surfaces to take in nutrients from your food, so your gut has the surface area of half a badminton court, roughly 40 square meters. The larger you are, the more hidden surfaces you need. Take a tree. Its way to stay alive is to create sugar out of thin air and sunlight. So, it needs as much surface area as possible. An orange tree with 2,000 leaves has a leaf surface area of 200 square meters. But the surface inside the leaves where diffusion actually occurs is 6,000 square meters. The same with roots, where water diffuses from the soil into countless tiny hairs that maximize the surface area. The roots of one square meter of grass add up to around 350 square meters of surface. If we look at the breathtaking diversity of life on this planet, it seems like everything is pretty different. And it is. This is why I, you know, I remember uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about surface and how important it is. Look at that. Even just, just living f for cells and us living things. Surface area is so important because, you know, because of diffusion and how oxygen travels to every cell. But some basic principles are the same for everybody and have not changed significantly for billions of years. If we look at the very, very small or the very, very big, waste goes out and fresh fuel comes in. Yeah, we are all basically multicellular life, but you know, there are still cells 
like cells are same in every living thing so some basic fundamental things has to be same big animals just need a lot of complex plumbing to make it possible fresh fuel is something we can all use from time to time especially for our creativity all it really takes is to try something new and we have the perfect opportunity to get you started we partnered with Skillshare, an online learning community. Yeah, people, go to skillshare.com for us, Kuzgazat9, and support this channel. Damn. This, I like this life and size series. This is the third video. This shows how, you know, basically, how can gravity work, how important is, like, you know, the large, you know, blue whale. If you take it out of the water and put it on the ground, it's not going to work because it's way too big. Its insides are way too many, you know, way too much mass. It will collapse under its own weight. So something like that, you know, uh, it's just ridiculous to see, uh, you know, how much, uh, you know, laws of physics changes things and how all the living things adapts to it. I mean, how many, you know, veins and different ve blood vessels, how many we have, this is ridiculous number. So yeah. All right, people, if you like my next video, like and subscribe. Check out the Rick Sunday, there's a link in the description. Check out the cards, please. Check out the end cards and I'll see you next time.